y'all are ready to laugh, our first guest is a stand-up comedian who you know as one of the hilarious correspondents on The Daily Show. Give it up for Roy Wood Jr. You just won an NAACP Image Award recently. Congrats. How does that feel? It, it, it feels good, you know. I know, I know you got an EGOT, but see, I'm trying to go after the NEGOT. I put that in, <laughs> the N for NAACP, <laughs> and then I'm gonna get the NEGOT. But I'm on my way. Oh. I'm creeping. I'm creeping. You're creeping. I'm creeping up there. Okay. <laughs> you live in New York. You you yeah. enjoy traveling to the West Coast. I don't I don't mind travel. I just, I would wish, like, with everything that's going on with the airlines this year, you know, mm -hmm. it's always some snafus, a big storm or whatever. Just, if the flight is delayed, don't tell me why. Mm. I just don't want to know. I'm one of them people, I don't want to know what's wrong with the plane. <laughs> just, when it's time, I will trust that when the plane is moving, that you have checked all the buttons. Yeah. And know that it's time to move. Because, like, you'll get on the plane now, and the captain will be like, ladies and gentlemen, it's a delay. Uh, the hydraulic holes, and we're going to duct tape it. Oh, no. Did you just say duct tape over the intercom? <laughs> I don't want to hear the word duct tape, but we've been up 30,000 feet, 500 miles an hour. That's a good and point. And I'm supposed to trust the duct tape? Just <laughs> tell me, just lie. I would rather just lie. Just lie. You, I don't know if you rode the school bus. I don't know if you rode the school bus going to school. My sister's up. a school bus driver. Okay. So then you know, when you, like, you be on the school bus and the school bus get to smoking, school bus driver, what they say? Sit down back there and just shut up. That's, that's the kind of pilot I want. That's what you want the pilot to say? Just tell me shut up. I don't need to know what's going on. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, you are hilarious. You have a six-year-old son, huh? Yeah. What is it like raising him in New York? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> WNBA game, New York Liberty. They gave him a ball at that game. I, it's, it's interesting because I'm from Alabama, so okay. I'm a southerner. Ah. I don't know nothing about New York. <laughs> I don't know nothing about raising no city kid. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him how to ride the train. I'm scared of the train. I, like, I don't... <laughs> So I'm trying to, but you know, that's what parenting is about. Parenting is about preparing your children for a world that yeah. you don't even know what it's going to be evolving into. So when we see stuff out in the city, you know, you grow up faster as a child in New York yeah. because you're around adults and everything. Like in the South, it's your neighborhood and your neighborhood is just your people. You're not downtown, you're not in the suburb. New York is everybody on top of each other. I'm like, yes, son, that is a pigeon eating a rat. <laughs> Life be like that sometime. Come on, let's get on the train. <laughs> like, you wouldn't see that in the South. That's like oh. a special summertime treat. When you see an animal eating another animal, New York City, that's every two blocks. <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's interesting, though, because, like, when I think about the world I'm trying to prepare him for, it's, it's weird, especially in raising a black man. Right. And how do I treat him to be friendly in a world mm -hmm. where people eventually might fear him? And how do I treat him to be benevolent? And it's even more difficult when you talk about, like, conversations about the police or racism. And I want my son to grow up in a world that, you know, that he would err on the side of assuming the best of people and not the worst of people. Mm. But also, you need to be your ass prepared in case something go down. <laughs> and so I don't know how <laughs> to balance that. Yes. You know, I love your On The Daily Show. It is amazing with Trevor Noor. That's the homie. What, That's is, the it, homie. what is it like now that he's left? It's, it's been different. You know, we've had a run of guest hosts, and thankfully, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm finally getting an opportunity myself to step on the desk. Yes. And try to do my thing a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, but the mission has not changed of the show. There's a lot of craziness in the world. We have to try and break that down and make it simple, make it plain, and make it funny. And so, you know, wherever my journey goes, you know, continuing with The Daily Show, after The Daily Show, I'm thankful that Trevor Noah gave me an opportunity for the last seven, eight years to be a part of that journey and tell relevant stories. Like, we don't always just get on there and jokey joke. We step into real issues that are going on in the country and try our best to make them funny, but at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff ain't, it ain't a laughing matter. You're right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I'm thankful to still have a check to, take my son to WNBA games. That's right, and you're doing a mighty job doing it, too. Oh, my God. Were there any signs that Trevor was leaving that you noticed at all? I knew Trevor was leaving when he stopped cutting his hair. <laughs> like, to me, that was the point. See, 
So that was it. The, yeah, the right issue. there when it was like he got the afro and then he tried to trick white folks by getting it edged up. I was like, you can't trick me. Because uh -huh. he, when he started the Daily Show, it was all nice and low cut. And then after the pandemic, he was like, Africa. I was like, ah, <laughs> let me buy a house real quick while I still got some W 2 <laughs> And you're hosting at the White House your correspondent, the dinner? Yeah, the White House correspondent's dinner. This is where we just get a bunch of people in the room, and then I tell them all about their problems. <laughs> 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 I tell them people about <laughs> it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I was gonna ask, are you nervous? How do you even prepare for something like that? The, one, you gotta watch all the news, you gotta take in all the horrible stuff in the world, and then you got to figure out who is to blame, and then you just gotta walk in the room with the people to blame. <laughs> like, the, this, is what I, this is what I explained the correspondence dinner to essentially be. Like, remember every time you've ever gone in a store and demanded to speak to the manager. Uh -huh. I want to speak to the owners. <laughs> I think we ought to do that. And you never get to speak to them. <laughs> Correspondence dinner, you get to speak to all they ass. <laughs> Every single That's manager of this country is going to be there, including the head supervisor, Joe Biden. You got to have something to say. <laughs> to every last one of them, and you still gotta make it out of the room safely. How? I don't know. <laughs> I keep asking Trevor about it. I'm like, how did you do it last year? He goes, I can't talk to you. I'm in Africa. I'm on vacation. Stop. <laughs> like, I would be terrified to, like, look out there into the audience, you know, Seriously, when, when they're there. You, you perform. You've... So many performance trophies. How do you... Yeah, but, you know, sometimes you gotta play a trick. Like, okay, it's just see a people, so you look above the people when it's, you know, intimidating people in, in the no, crowd. No, but that's the thing, though, is that I cannot be intimidated by those people. Those people were elected by people like you and me. They should be intimidated <laughs> by me. Let them know. And they should be intimidated that I am the voice of the voter in the room in that moment. And if there is something that can be said to hold people accountable and hopefully change the sway of how we perceive politics in this country, to me, that's the ultimate goal of what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do with the Correspondence Dinner, because Smart. we exist on these two edges when the truth is that most of America is right here in the middle, and we've lost the concept of nuance in this country. We just go, oh, it's that, so it must be everything must be wrong. But like, no, that's not what it is. So I'm hoping that we have an opportunity on the other side of whatever the hell I say to these folks <laughs> to have more nuanced political discussions on real issues in this country and not get so polarized and set down and baked in on one side of, you know, particular issues. Mm. Sound like they got the right one, that is for sure. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.